This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm, where I'm happy to be joined by Dr. Indy Fernando. Hello, Dr. Fernando. Hello. And I'm most interested in your work because you've done an interesting study in the UK involving radiation therapy, or you call it radiotherapy, between or during chemotherapy cycles and the impact that this has on breast cancer recurrence. Talk to us about it. Well, the standard way of giving chemotherapy and radiotherapy in the world is to give your chemotherapy first and then follow that with radiation treatment. That's been the standard of care everywhere. And what we were concerned about is that this was delaying the radiotherapy for quite a long time. Therefore, was it possible to give your radiotherapy actually in between the chemotherapy cycles or in between one cycle and, uh, and through to another? And if we did that, we could avoid delaying the radiotherapy. We might also see a, a sort of combined effect of chemotherapy and radiotherapy together. And that combined effect, what we call synchronous treatment, is something we've seen it in several other tumor types and have shown that we can actually improve local tumor control rates above and beyond what we'd normally see if you gave the treatment at the end. And that's what the trial was about. And what the trial showed was that you could reduce your chances of the cancer coming back locally in the breast or if you'd had a mastectomy on the chest wall by 35%. That extent of benefit was as much as you see in giving this sort of chemoradiation combination in lots of other different cancers. And that was quite a surprising effect and larger than we were expecting. This is the sort of thing that with further research could change standard of care? It could indeed. Um, it does involve using a CMF type chemotherapy schedule which is probably used far less frequently in the United States than in Europe and the United Kingdom. Uh, nevertheless, the, the benefits are seen and the benefits are quite substantial, especially when you take into account that for every four local recurrences that you prevent, you can actually also save the lives of one patient. When you say cytoxin 5 of u methotrexate, which was commonly used in the 80s in the US, now this could become, this would be the protocol that would have to be used? Our data is based on this particular combination, either used by itself or with an anthracycline, what we call adriamycin or epirubicin, given before the CMF. What stage of disease were these patients? These patients were all early stage breast cancers, but they all required both chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Um, and what was interesting that is that using this particular combination of drugs and radiation, we didn't see any very significant side effects, apart from the fact that the skin did certainly become more sore. We got more skin reactions. But for the trial as a whole, over 96% of the patients at the end of six weeks, all the skin reactions had completely settled. And what patients particularly liked, even more than, I mean, they, they didn't know if their cancer was going to come back or not, but what patients particularly liked was the fact that it shortened their treatment. If you think that people have to go through six, seven months of chemotherapy, then have to wait, then have to have five or six weeks of radiotherapy. By doing it in this combination, it meant that once they finished their last chemotherapy, they'd finished all their treatment. They particularly like that because it's a long haul for a patient. It's quite nice to say you finished your last chemotherapy, you can book your holiday, you can get back to work. What about side effects such as fatigue? Because this is a big burden uh, of treatment on a patient at one time. And that's why we did a very detailed quality of life analysis. And that we have also presented, in fact, this afternoon on our poster. And what was very interesting is that we didn't in any way impact on quality of life. The quality of life of patients who have the chemotherapy followed by radiation and those patients who had the combined treatment was almost identical. There was no significant statistical difference. So we weren't making them, we weren't giving them a miserable time doing the treatment. As I say, they did get a slightly worse skin reaction. Um, and in the long term, the 
the, you did get a very, very slight effect on a, on a condition called telangiectasia. What we mean by that is on the skin, it, the pigmentation looks slightly different. It doesn't cause any, any physical harm, but the appearances of the skin are slightly different. That was very small. It was like 1.5% more. It was a very small effect. What happens now with the research? Because obviously this is a significant outcome of a study. Well, our next step is obviously we will be writing up the paper formally. We are looking at all the different uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy schedules that we used to see which ones will be suitable for this program, which ones aren't. And we may have to go forward and, and consider further research trials to see if this same benefit is seen in other types of chemotherapy treatments that are used um, using combinations such as anthracycline followed by taxin. This would clearly involve completely new research projects and new research trials to see if the same benefit that we've seen now is and the same minimal toxicity profile is carried on with other treatment schedules. And the patients in the study, for how long did you follow them? We had a long follow-up, over 8.8 .8 years, so we know that these are long-term results. These results are not going to change. Are you still following these patients? All the patients had to be followed up for 10 years. So um, we have already followed up. The median follow-up is already 8.8 .8 years, but every patient will have to be followed up for 10 years. So Dr. Fernando, just out of curiosity, what inspired the study, the, the research? How did you come to think about, hmm, what would happen if we delivered radiotherapy differently than in the classic way that we've done it thus far? I was sitting in a room listening to a talk and somebody happened to mention that they'd done an audit and it looked as if about 30 or 40 percent of oncologists gave their radiation at the end and it looked like 20 to 30 percent of oncologists were already giving it in between cycles. And I thought to myself, nobody's actually looked at this to see if it really is beneficial. Nobody's actually looked to see if the side effects are worse. And this is clearly a very important clinical trial that needs to be undertaken. And it's extraordinary if you think that we've been using chemotherapy and radiotherapy for over 30 years. And until today, we haven't got any, we've not had any really good data to show which is the best way of, of sequencing the two modalities. But today, we do have some data suggesting probably the way we need to go. I could only imagine how excited you must be. Well, as I say, the, if you had asked me to predict the result when we set up the trial, I would have said it probably may show a slight benefit, but I was concerned that the long-term side effects would be worse. In fact, the long-term side effects were much better than, than any of us were expecting. Dr. Fernando, what made you suspect that there could be any therapeutic benefit? It's a very interesting question. I, I just, th it, what, what I actually, what I, what I thought was we're delaying radiation therapy for a long time. You know, if you give your chemotherapy for six or seven months, you know, giving your radiation treatment at the end, that's a long delay. I thought, let's try and bring the radiotherapy earlier to avoid the delay. I didn't want to give the radiotherapy first because that delays the chemotherapy. And we knew from a, a study that had been done in the United States that there was a suggestion that if you gave the radiotherapy first and followed it with the chemo, you're delaying your, your chemotherapy and that probably wasn't the best way of doing it. So what, what made me think is I said, well, if we do it this way, we won't be delaying either treatment. But in fact, since I thought of the study, we've had more and more data from lots of other cancer sites showing that this chemo radiation, which I'm sure you've seen in, in many other cancer sites, there's an extra additional effect. I mean, it's, it's used in head and neck cancer, it's used in lung cancer, it's used in cervical cancer, it's used in rectal cancer. And all these sites, giving the chemo and radiation together, seems to give an enhanced effect. We didn't have any data to suggest that when we set up the trial in 1998. The main thing I was looking at was trying not to delay either treatment. How do you successfully do radiation on a fresh surgical site that's still trying to heal? The, by the time the patients come to me, the, the, the operative scar has healed. So patients you will usually start their chemotherapy approximately four weeks after their surgery. So you know I, our surgeons are pretty good. By then, they will have healed. 
Well, I think this is a really fascinating uh, study, and I want to congratulate you on being so innovative and thinking out of the box. And wouldn't that be something if you realize that your work is a practice-changing event? Well, um, we think it is. We think we think it will practice change for, for people using the, 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 the if people using the sort of chemotherapy that we've used in the trial, there really can be very little argument for not using this. It it you know it wins on every score. You you shorten your treatment time for the patient, your side effects are minimal, and they're controllable. And we did the study, you know, it was set up in 1998, finished in 2004. Radiotherapy techniques have advanced enormously. So even the, the soreness of the skin problems that we did find are now very much less because of our improved technology. We can use that technology to probably reduce the side effects th to what we've actually seen in the study. So we, it is important that we select patients carefully. If you think somebody is going to develop a very nasty sore skin reaction, this treatment may not be suitable for every single patient, but for, l for the vast majority of patients it will be. And it's wonderful if you, if you can think you may have reduced the chances of their cancer coming back by a third. That's a big benefit locally. It means a lot of ladies who might have gone on to have a mastectomy will not need to do so. A lot of ladies who've, who get a recurrence on the chest wall after reconstruction, their reconstruction won't have to be removed. And, and I, I especially like the idea that uh, you can consolidate everything and shorten Oh the yeah. Time that a patient it's a long it's a long haul, isn't it? Yes, it's a very long haul. And it's nice to finish it a bit early, about two months earlier. Congratulations and thank you, Dr. Indy Fernando. Thank you.